Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our carrot basket. Now I have all of my pieces cut out in front of me, as should you. Uh, this is a very cute little piece. Uh, we've got two little jointed figures and then this little beauty. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the main pieces here and we have these panels that are gonna go on the inside and that is going to not only make things look a little prettier, but also strengthen the inside. Now, we're gonna actually put these on just six sections. We're gonna leave two of them off, and I'll explain why uh, once we cross that bridge. But let's get this going here. Uh, this process is gonna be pretty redundant because I'm basically doing the same thing over and over again. But uh, you're gonna do six of them, and we're gonna not do the pieces here at the end. There's one end that has a tab. We are going to place that on this section, but not on the, uh, on the end piece without a tab. Okay, and again, I will explain why in just a moment. Okay, so let's get these going here and get these panels in place. Like I said, this will just look nicer on the inside, be much sturdier as well. Okay, and as you're putting these down, make sure that you're getting somewhat of an even border all the way around and that you're not, um, when you glue these down, do not cross over the little score areas there because otherwise it won't fold properly. Okay, so we'll keep it going here. And again, there's two panels that we're gonna leave off because we actually need to get the handle installed first and then we can cover it up. Otherwise the handle is gonna be visible and this will actually um, add a little bit more strength and stability to the handle, okay? So just these three, you can see the tabs here. So we're doing these three, we're leaving this one alone and we'll do the same to the other side here. We're gonna leave this one alone here. The one on the end without a tab. Okay, very simple process. Oh, that is way off, much better. And also at the bottom here, make sure you don't encroach over the score mark for the bottom as well, because we need that to move freely so that we can glue the bottom on. Otherwise, you have a basket with a hole in it, and what good is that? Okay, there we go. Looks good. Okay, so we are going to assemble the structure first, obviously, and then we'll put the handle together. So there's the three on this side. We'll leave these two for later. Now we just need to connect these two sections together by way of this tab here. So let's get our glue flowing on this tab. I'm gonna go a little bit heavier with the glue here because I'm gonna spread this glue out to the very edge of the tab. So everything looks nice and seamless. We'll spread that out nice and thin. You can actually flip this over so that we're looking at the face or the front. And we can take this other piece and lay it right onto that section there. Now I'm looking at this little scallop up here and just making sure that there's a continuity there. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna take this and lift it up and fold it onto itself at that seam. And when you do that, you should notice that all of these little scallops also land right on top of each other, okay? So you can see you've got the scallop here. This one fits right on there perfectly, which is a good indicator that we have it lined up uh, pretty much spot on. All right, now let's close it up. We're gonna put some glue on this tab. Same thing, you don't have to spread it out. I just think it always ends up looking nicer. Okay, so we can actually put this down flat now and take this other side and pop it right on there. It should fit perfectly. Okay, there we go. Press that down, give it a few seconds, and then take it and fold it over onto itself, that seam right there, and press down. OK, 
Okay, wonderful. Okay, and as you can see here, when we open this up, uh, the handle is actually going to go right here. But for now, we need to get this ready so that we can put the bottom on. And we're gonna apply glue to all of these tabs. And when it comes time to actually close it up, I want you to take and focus on getting this side aligned with this side first. And then everything will kind of, uh, everything else will work its way into place. And I'll share a few little tips here to make that happen. Because this, this eight-sided free-flowing shape is not hard, but if you don't know what you're doing, it may be a little challenging. So I'll show you what to do here, but let's get that glue out to the very edge. It's gonna make it look nice and clean. It'll be nice and strong too. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna bring this lid down and we're gonna work on aligning this section first. Get that nice and straight, nice and centered. Okay, now these, you can see they're not anywhere near where they need to be. Let me go back to this. I kind of let it go a little prematurely. And the first time I did this, it was a lot easier. There we go. Okay, and then if you need to, you can kind of just grab and kind of give it a little bit of a squeeze or a push or a tug, whatever you need to do to get the rest of these tabs aligned as precisely as you can. I had to give that side a little bit of a push in. This side needs to come out a bit. Okay, it doesn't need to be perfect, but if you can get it perfect, then by all means, it's better than not perfect. Okay, there we go. And just continue to press down along the very edges here. Make sure that that's getting good contact. And once you're sure it is, you can flip it over and start pressing down on the tabs from the inside. And that's gonna make sure that it really doesn't go anywhere. I'm just taking a look at the seam there, and that looks great. <clears throat> okay, so now we can take and just apply a little bit of glue to the bottom here, because we have this piece that will not only cover up the tabs, but also make this a little bit stronger from the inside. Okay, there we go. So that is looking great. Now what we can do is, let's just get the handle assembled, because everything else is pretty much uh, very straightforward. Okay, so okay, so the first thing we need to do is we're gonna take the main part of the handle here, and you'll notice that we have a series of score marks down here, okay, and that is just to help you with the placement of this once we get to it. We're gonna line that up like that, okay. But first we need to actually connect these two pieces together to make it one, okay. And you'll notice that right here, on both of these, there's a little score line. And what we need to do is just match that up right to that score line like that. There's one on, on each of these, so it doesn't matter which one you do. Just wanna make sure that we get those lined up, okay? So what I would suggest doing is actually taking, and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this side here. Don't go past the score mark. And I'm gonna rub that glue all the way out to the very edge. And then I'm gonna go on this one here, and I'm gonna throw a little bit of glue on this and run that out to the very edge as well. And then we'll take this and just lay that right on top of the other one, right up to that score mark. And get that nice and centered as well. There we go. Beautiful. Just give that a second to set. Because we are gonna to need, to, um, we need to train this a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a, a roundness to it. Because we need to take this and need to glue this down as well, okay? And it's better to do this since it is gonna be curved. It's better to start it curved rather than try to glue the two pieces on top of each other and then curve it. That typically doesn't work very well, okay? So I'm gonna start at the center here and with a dowel, I'm gonna place this strip between my finger and the dowel, lift it up about almost 90 degrees and just run the dowel through. Okay, and you see what that does. It really kind of gives it a curve. Same thing with this side. Just very, very gently give it a little bit of curve. Try to make it as, as equal as possible. Okay. All right, so now we've got this piece here. Okay, so now we have this piece here. There's actually two of these because we're going to put one on the outside and we're going to put one on the inside. 
Okay, so like we did with the other piece, I'm going to take this and just give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of action with the dowel just to train it so that it's curved. Now, obviously, this one's going to go on top, and we want the pattern facing out on the bottom. So we're going to train this the opposite way. Okay, let me give that one more. There we go. Okay, so we can flip this over. This is the top, and you see the little score lines there. Those are there to help you with the placement so you can get it nice and centered. The rest of this is actually going to go behind. Um, well, it's going to go uh, behind one of the panels that we installed here once we get it in place. So let's grab our glue and start applying glue to this little strip. Go easy on the glue here. And it's a small, thin little strip. It's kind of flimsy. So you might have to kind of scoot your hand up a little bit. Okay, and we're gonna start flat, but once I have it in place, I'm actually gonna pick it up and start shaping this into that round shape. Okay, so there we go. Now we can take, and you can see what's happening there. And you want it to dry while it's actually in this position, like so. Make sure that Everything's making good contact. You can kind of look at it from a side angle here and make sure everything's nice and flat. And there we go. Okay. That looks good. If by chance, like that. Okay, that came undone. It's okay. Uh, actually, with this, you can do two things. You can literally pull it back a little bit and just add some extra glue. If you don't have this much sticking out, you can always take a scrap piece of paper, put a little bit of glue right on the corner, and just paint it in there. All right, I'm going to pop that down and kind of hold it for a few extra seconds just to make sure that it really sets. And that is just a byproduct of the curve that happens, especially if you don't get enough glue in certain spots. Okay, like I have a little bit of a gap there. So I'm going to take my scrap piece of paper, throw a little bit of glue right on the corner, just kind of tuck it in between these two pieces, paint a little bit of glue on there, and just hold it in place. Okay. Yeah, the curvature definitely makes things a little challenging sometimes, but as long as you keep it curved like that, it should be fine. I've got one more little area that I want to fix. The challenges of making dimensional things with flat paper. Not difficult though, okay? So I've got that there. I need to hold that down. Give that a few seconds to set. There we go. Okay, so now you can see that it's really holding that shape now. I'm gonna take and grab the other side that's gonna go underneath and get my glue on that. All the way out to the very edge. Okay, and again, we do have, you should, should be able to see the little score marks there from the other side. I do see them here. So I'm going to line that up as accurately as I can. Pop that right in the center. Just kind of going down the road here. I don't want to. I don't want to straighten it out. I want to kind of keep it on that curve. So just keep working that piece as you go along the curve that we already have there, and that looks pretty much spot on. Okay, so next we're going to take and actually install this into the basket. Now, the little score mark here at the bottom of this uh, is kind of, you know, multi-purpose. When we pop this in here, we're actually going to align that with the center scallop in the center of this little section. And we want to make sure that we get it nice and center and upright. Okay, so I'm going to start with just the one side first. And I'm going to apply glue. I'm going to apply glue to this whole section like so, okay? And if you want, what you can also do is throw a little bit of glue right here, right at the top, just so that it's nice and flush all the way to the very edge. 
Okay, so pop that in, make sure it's centered, and use that little score mark there as your guide. You can actually put that down flat on your surface and just take a look at it visually, make sure it's centered. Let's see, that looks good. Yep, and let's see where this one's gonna end up. If in fact it is centered, yep, looks good. So let's go ahead and apply glue to this section here. And then just like I did before, if you wanna put a little dot of glue right on the inside, right in the center of that guy there, that little section, that's fine too. And then pop that right into place, nice and centered. Use that little score mark to help you with the positioning. And then we can take that and put it flat down on our surface and press that down into place. This one I probably should have been a little more patient with. So do yourself a favor and kind of hold this in place for a few extra moments so it looks nice and seamless there where those sections join together. Okay, keep holding that. And looking at it, looks pretty good as far as, yeah, looks spot on. Okay, so now, now we can revisit these little guys here. And we're just gonna put glue on them and just glue them down to the inside like so. That's gonna add some additional stability to the little handle and also pretty it up by hiding any of, uh, well, hiding that section actually, as well as that little tab in there that isn't as pretty as the non-tabbed sections. Okay, so just get that nice and centered, just like we did when we first started. Make sure it's nice and centered. Press that down, and there you have it. That one's covered up, so we'll go over to the other half, other side, and get that one in place. Okay, doesn't need to be perfect as far as the glue application goes. And there we go. So just pop that right in, make sure it's nice and centered. And you can see how that looks now. Looks very seamless. Everything is nice and hidden, nice and strong, very professional. And wow. Okay. All right. Um, I already pre-assembled a bunch of the carrots here. So you're going to do this eight times. You're going to take this piece and glue it down to its shadow counterpart. So we'll get the glue flowing there. Like that. And we're gonna pop that right in the center so that you have a nice even border all the way around. Give it a nice little two-tone effect. And just press that down. So there's one. I'm gonna do two. And then you're gonna pause me and you're gonna do the remaining six. Okay, now before you go here, uh, there's one other section of this that we do need to assemble, and I'll show you that as well, because these are all gonna go on the actual carrot. Okay, so there's the two. I've already done the six other ones. So for this part here, uh, we're gonna make this, this little final piece here on top, the, you know, the actual greenery, the leaves of the carrot. We're gonna take one of these and glue it right on top of one of these. Okay, so we just need to put a little bit of glue right at the base of this, like so, and just match that up with the bottom of the other piece. So there's a darker green behind the lighter green, like so, okay? And then I can just hold it here. We'll take and just kind of train these petals a little bit. And I'm just taking my dowel, placing it between my finger, or placing the leaf between my dowel and my finger, lifting it up about 90 degrees, and then running the dowel out. Okay, just to give it a little bit of a curve. All right, we'll do one more here. Again, just putting it right at the base of this thing. You don't need to overdo it. Like so. And while I'm holding it, I can train it. Might as well save some time if you can. Your fingers are just as good as glue. Okay, and then we take and put some glue on the back of this. And on these carrots here at the top, you'll see that there 
is a little bit of a score line that matches the shape of the bottom of this. And you just want to pop that right in place like so. If it's a smidge off, it's fine. But at least, you know, get it in the ballpark. Okay. All right, so let's get our glue on the last one here. I did the other six off camera. So you'll wanna, at this point, you can pause me and get your, get your other ones all ready to go, just like that, okay? And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take and actually use some foam squares to put our carrots on the side of the basket. And you can see here on the basket, this little shadow element actually matches up with the top of the carrot. So when we place it, that's roughly where we want to put it. Okay, so let's just create like a little assembly line here. And let me see here. Yeah, I'll do a little assembly line. I'll do three of them with you. And I think with these, we're gonna go one at the top. I think three should be enough for each one. Bring one, bring one all the way down as far as you can go based on the size of your little foam square. Okay. And then you can peel these off. You could technically glue them down flat if you want. There'll still be plenty of dimension once we add the rest of the little greenery. Okay, but if you really want to make it pop, you can add some foam squares to it. Okay, so match that up. Make sure it's nice and centered down the side, like so. Okay, so as I mentioned, if you want, you can glue these down um, flat without using the foam squares. I think it'll look pretty much just as good. This is just gonna give it a little extra dimension, which is always nice. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I've got two of the carrots in place, and I'm just gonna go down the row here with the remaining carrots. You're gonna do the same. And we're gonna flip all these guys over. I'm gonna do a little assembly line here with adding the foam squares and we'll put the remaining six in place and then we just have a few additional little little features that we also need to glue down i'm just getting my foam squares in place this is going to be very very cute so if you have some kids or some grandkids nephews or nieces um, or even just a neighbor friend at church, a friend at work, you know, your boss, whatever. I never like to suck up to my boss unless they were cool. So, anyway, they will definitely appreciate this. And you can fill it with whatever things they like, you know. I'm sure your kids, anything sweet, obviously. Try to... Uh, Try to minimize our sugar intake at our home and offer alternatives if possible, which is usually very possible. I don't see why not, uh, but I won't lie. I do, I do occasionally enjoy eating something that isn't exactly healthy for me because, boy, are we trained to really, really consume sugar our bodies are like wow that is amazing i want more and more and more of that okay here we go just moving on down here i've got four more to put in place and then we've got a few more little things to add which i think is pretty self-explanatory but we're gonna hang out and get it done together why not what else we got to do today might as well get it done okay yeah, we do have some little flowers that we're gonna add to the basket. And then there's also um, some little foliage that we're gonna add that almost mimics like, I guess maybe a garden or, you know, like a, a carrot patch. Like, is that what they call them, carrot patches? I don't know. I'm actually gonna grow some carrots this year. I think with all the uh, rising costs of everything, I've got the space for it. And I usually have a garden I just haven't been very serious about it. I think we're going to change that this year. I should have some seeds coming, hopefully by Monday. 
Okay, so the last one is in place. I'm just try to make sure you keep everything nice and straight. There we go. Okay, that looks cool already. Look at that. Okay. Uh, next, what we can do, uh, yeah, let's just put the flowers in place. Now this again is gonna be kind of a repetitive process. You're gonna have a total of uh, eight flowers, actually nine flowers. One of them is not going to have any little score marks on it. These have score marks on them because we need to fold them in half like that, okay? And these are actually gonna get glued right here, right to the side, right to the corner of each little section, okay? And we're gonna try to bring that up a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so just bring it up to about, just so that you can still see the top of the basket, okay? I think right about there, you can actually have the petals kind of sticking up above it a little bit if you want, but if you are gonna do it one way, try to keep it consistent throughout, okay? And I'm literally just gonna do just a few little drops of glue on each of these, maybe just one little dot on each little petal, okay? Again, make sure you have it folded in half and just pop that in place. Use the little score mark as a guide. Okay, there we go. And one other thing too, I forgot to mention, um, if you want, what you can do is take and curl these petals towards you just to give them a little bit of dimension. Okay, and in doing so, when you go to glue this down, you're only gonna put glue in like the center of this. Okay, so it's optional. However you wanna do it, if you wanna, if you wanna glue it down flat, and you want to put glue on all the petals. If you want to give it a little dimension, fold it, train the petals out like I did, and then just put glue on the center of the flower. Okay, and I think obviously with that little hole there, I think that lends itself to, uh, maybe we could put, I don't know if we could put a rhinestone on there. It might not work because of the curve, but either way, you get the, you get the idea here. Uh, the one without the score mark on it, um, that's actually gonna go on top, okay, with this little extra leaf that we have there. So hold on to that for the last step. Uh, but we do have, we also have some additional greenery that we need to add, which we'll be doing here in just a moment. So this part, again, is gonna be kind of redundant. So if you wanna pause me here and meet me at the next step, we're gonna be putting these guys in place. So when you see me reach for those, you can hit play again and pick up where you left off. I just need to get my remaining flowers installed here before I move on. There we go. Wonderful. So anytime I'm doing something like this, it, it is kind of helpful to sort of do a uh, assembly line kind of thing where you're doing one process at a time. So for example, I'm training the petals on this right now and then folding it in half and then getting it ready. Because you might as well do all this in one fell swoop while you're actually holding the tool in hand instead of, you know, putting this down, grabbing the glue, gluing it, picking up the, the, the um, what's it called? The dowel again, putting the glue down and this just speeds things up. Thank you, Henry Ford. Okay, and yeah, before you know it, you'll have yourself a very, very special little basket. And I think maybe, maybe instead of giving it to the kids who don't always appreciate all the, all the work and effort, I might give this to an adult this Easter. We'll see. We'll see, I'll probably do something a little more, a little more simple for the kids because they just want the stuff that's inside. I mean, who are we kidding here? Okay, all right, so we're gonna finish this up with the remaining flowers. Going easy on the glue here. You don't need, you don't need two tons of glue to hold a flower that weighs less than an ounce in place. So go easy on the glue. Get it in place, press down, we'll let her go. And move on to the next one. Very simple. 
I guess that's a, a good rule to live by as far as glue goes. Like I said, you don't need you don't need two tons of glue for something that weighs an ounce. Okay, so we're almost there, and then the last part. The only thing about this project is that there's you know there's some redundancy, which is great because you could literally get in the craft room and get something made without having to think too much, especially when you get to these repetitive sections. And it's just fun. All right, I got two more to go. Going easy on the glue here. That one's. There we go. And I'm noticing that as I go along here and get these flowers in place, I'm seeing a little bit of glue in that little center hole, but that's okay. It's gonna dry. It's just gonna dry. It'll have a little bit of a sheen to it, but I could always maybe cover it up with um, a little liquid pearl, or I think I, bet I could probably even just get a, a rhinestone in there too. Even though it's not flat, it might look a little weird actually. So yeah, if you want to fill in the centers with some liquid pearls, you can do that. Uh, I don't see why not. But as far as the original design goes, we don't, we don't call for it, so I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, now the top part here, we've got this little leaf, and that's gonna go right in the center. Okay, so let's just throw a little bit of glue on this little pill-shaped item or object in the center, and then we'll take it and just try to center it as evenly as you can. Uh, that's way off. That's much better. Yeah, just center it. If you want, you can take and just kind of curl the leaf up a little bit. Okay, and then finally we have our little flower. I'm also gonna take and curl the petals towards me so they're up and not so flat. Okay, and then we can take a little bit of glue just around the center. And that one we could definitely put a little rhinestone on, I think. Why not? And just pop that right on top. And that kind of hides the little seam there. Not completely, but for the most part. So, I mean, that's really cool as is. Um, do you have one other section here that we're gonna put together? And it's almost, yeah, I guess it's just grass. Okay, so what's gonna happen here, and we're gonna repeat this eight times, is we're gonna put this layer on first. Okay, and that's gonna go right up against the little crevice there. Now before we do that though, just so that these don't get in the way, I'm gonna take and train these back and that's also gonna give it some added dimension. Okay, so we'll just take and train those backwards towards you like that. Okay, I'll show you that. We're gonna do that with this one too. This one won't be as pronounced because it's a little bit smaller, but it'll still help. Okay, all right, so the idea here is to take and we're gonna put glue just on the center of these, okay? Just right up to about here. I don't think you even need to go all the way to the top. And technically, uh, what I want you to do is take this top part and actually curl it down so that one's kind of hanging over as well, okay? And so it's like that. And we'll take and apply some glue just to the center of this thing, right? where the valley is, like that. Okay, and then we're gonna take one of these sections, it's gonna be flush with the bottom. And just match that up with the, the crease there. Make sure it's nice and centered. And just press that down into place. Oops. Okay, this is gonna be a little more challenging for me because I did emboss this but it's fine. Just take your time with this and just kind of use your two fingers and go up the sides like that. Just like that, okay? See, it's nice and flush at the bottom. And then, like I said, we do have this second layer. It's gonna go right on top of the first layer, like so. And that's gonna get glued down flat as well. Oh, and also, sorry, forgot. This top one, curl that down towards you. So all I'm doing is taking and placing that, that top little leaf between my finger and the dowel, bringing it up 90 degrees, running the dowel through. And again, we already curled these back. 
So you're gonna repeat that process for all of them. Okay, I'm gonna give this little squeeze there up to about there. And let's get our glue right into the little valley. You can grab it by the tip. Again, making sure that we get this nice and flush with the bottom and then right up the center. If it helps to get your hand inside to add a little bit of extra leverage, by all means, please do so. And there you have it. Whoops. Yeah, this is gonna be, if you're a poor soul like me who ended up embossing your piece, then you're gonna be dealing with this as well. Uh, I think what we may be able to do here, just to make it easier, I'm not even sure you need to bring the glue all the way up to this point. I think you could probably go about halfway and it would still do the trick. Okay, it looks like it's holding on just, just fine. Uh, all right, in which case, we can move on to the next side. I'll do one more with you here and then I'll probably just end up doing the rest of it off camera because, well, it's pretty straightforward. Don't forget, again, to take this top one and curl it towards you. And if you haven't already, take and curl these as well. So again, just as a little reminder here, I'm taking each of the little blades of grass, placing it between my finger and the dowel, lifting it up about 90 degrees, and then running the dowel through. Okay, and that's what gives it that nice little, that nice little curl, okay? And one more thing here before I forget, uh, we are going to put the, the dark green first and then the smaller light green on the outside. Okay, so again, I'm gonna go to about here. And if you want, I've got some on the valley there. You can also add a little bit to the sides like that. I wouldn't worry about getting every single inch of that covered with glue. I don't think it's necessary. Okay, and just pop it right up against the scored area there, the fold, and just go about halfway up, I'd say. The rest of it will hold in place just fine. There we go, perfect. That was a lot easier. And again, just make sure you're keeping it nice and flush at the bottom. There we go. Don't forget, again, to curl that back and curl these towards you as well. Okay, almost there. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna go about halfway up. I don't think we need to go all the way up. And I'll throw a little bit on the bottom of the sides here. Just thin that out a bit. And that's going right on top of the previous layer. Again, making sure that you've got it nice and flush at the bottom. You can kind of use your finger to help you get a feel. And there you go. And I'm just holding it right up to about the center. The rest of it, like I said, doesn't really, I don't think it needs the glue. It'll stay. And there we go. Awesome. All right, so go ahead and just finish up adding your little blades of grass here. Um, we're gonna do that six more times and then that's gonna really finish it off. Okay, so I've got all of my little grasses in place here. You can see all the way around and off camera here in between takes, um, I put a little bit of fill in here and just threw some little candies and chocolate chocolates in there. Uh, also, if you want, excuse me, I added, um, I added just some little rhinestones there on the side, uh, topped the flower off on top with a nice little rhinestone as well, and also added some rhinestones on the side. Uh, and that's really it. I'm not going to do anything else as far as bling goes for this project, but you can see how beautiful that looks. Um, and obviously when making baskets, uh, it would probably help to kind of fill this in and add a little bit of height. Um, so I need to, I was looking through all my stuff and unfortunately I don't really have anything uh, that works with this. So looks like I've got a trip to uh, home goods in my future here, but either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Uh, also hit the little bell so that you get notifications anytime we release a new video or if we go live, which we've been doing more of lately. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group. 
or you can type in this little URL that you see here at the bottom of your screen. But anyway, um, happy Easter crafting, and as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos, and also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.